Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. No matter who you are or what kind of music you like, I think we should all be paying attention to Billie Eilish. Yes, she does fall into the pop category when dishing out awards, but she is not your standard pop act. Her music first caught my attention with Bad Guy, which really broke many of the popular songwriting rules, and structurally, it felt more similar to progressive music than anything I'd heard on the radio in a decade. Additionally, she did just win Song of the Year at the Grammys, and I'm gonna listen right now for the first time ever to that performance. Let's get to it. There's so much beauty in just this first minute of the song. And I feel that there's so much relatability in the questioning, uh, in the lyrics. They're so brilliant. I love the way that this song was put into the Barbie movie, right? And yes, I, I saw that and heard this there. This is my first time seeing her live performance at the Grammys. Uh, this song perfectly describes this incredible emotional journey that Barbie goes through. Wow, I love that film. Just saying, I, I really loved it. Um, but at the same time, it perfectly relates to every other person on earth. Finding lyrics like that is really, really difficult and making them, making them feel like there's something you would have said, not just something that another person said that you feel like, oh yeah, I can relate to that, but something that maybe you would say yourself, that is that is like the cherry on top. I'm gonna go back to the beginning and talk some about her vocal style and some of the really cool choices. <laughs> Okay, yes, I'm going to stop this a lot and go back. I wanna try and really dig into how she's making some of these sounds and we could spend hours analyzing this. I will try to hold back. I'll try to try to just get some of the key best moments. One of those moments is this first vocalization. It's not words and it's not just vowels and it's not just consonants either. She's using nasal nasal consonants like m and n. I'm actually not sure if it was an m or an n. I think if we saw it on paper, we'd see it written as an m, just an m. But I think she's actually doing something closer to an n, which is really smart. Let's go back one more time so you can figure it out. Yeah, I think that's closer to an n. <laughs> With a little h too. So one of the key qualities of her tone is that it's gonna have this very whispery, whispery tone quality. It's gonna feel light, fluffy, ethereal most of the time. That is actually really hard to sustain and have a lot of continuity in. Uh, other people might think, oh, that just sounds easy. Her voice is weak. Mm, that's not the case. <laughs> Let's go back one more time because that sort of whispery quality is brought in initially by the H. She does, it sounds like a hmm. So a H going into an N, I believe here, even though we'd probably see this written on paper as an M or like a hum, that H allows more air to escape before the vocal folds come together, gives a really nice breathy uh, start right away, and it can actually help keeping a little more breath in the sound, if that's what you want. One more time. All 
right? You can hear that clearly now when you look for the age. And then when she wants to open up and release, she opens to an ah vowel. It's also going up in pitch right there in the first time, but opening into an ah makes this feeling of like a person who is inside with a hmm, because when you get that consonant, the mm there, it actually redirects a bunch of the sound back inside. So we feel like it's this inner kind of feeling. And then if you open up to an ah, suddenly that sound doesn't have that block anymore and the ah can just escape and hopefully go out and make people feel like there's a, a desire to go out and be presentational or out there in the public eye, but there's this hesitation inside at the same time. really, really clear attention to the diction here. Gosh, I love getting live performances like this that are stripped down because we can pay attention to every single detail of this awesome voice. Her approach to diction is very casual. It's even more casual than my speaking voice. My singing voice is like rah, operatic, right? We have so much uh, attention to getting our consonants out beyond an orchestra without a microphone to 4,000 people in that audience. That is, the diction for opera singers is way overdone. There's this totally uh, counter movement in contemporary music that is all about very soft diction. You want it to be easy to understand, but you don't want it to push someone away. You want it to feel intimate, like this is something you are whispering in someone's ear. So she has the whisper tone, but she also has this whispery kind of diction. She is very careful, for example, to not like things like a, a T explode because that would just push an audience member away. But oh, let's back a little more. That's a great example. I'm gonna go back through this phrase just one more time. Float the T at the end. Notice how tiny that is and what I was made for. She dentalizes it. It becomes more like a D than a T. We'll continue a lot longer after this time. Oops. That's a really important shift that we'll talk about soon. What was I made for? I, I, I don't know how to feel. <laughs> <laughs> I love watching her upper lip movement, you guys. <laughs> there's so much we can learn from how her upper lip is moving, how much teeth she is showing to help understand the things that she's doing in here to keep that sound focused forward. When you have a really floaty sound like this and it's going up high, she's going over this passaggio up there, which is a really funky transition place. It's perilous 
for singers to navigate. It's really easy for the voice to fall out of line, which is most people in an audience won't say, oh, the voice was out of line. They'll just say, yeah, it sounded different there and I didn't really like it. <laughs> singers have to make tiny adjustments to keep things, some people will say in a pocket, keep things focused through the same resonance. Uh, it's really tough. It's, it's tiny, tiny things that make a huge difference and there's lots of them. One of those things that uh, made a huge difference back here is this transition she does into a more full tone. So far, she's been singing in head voice. Now, I'm, I'm saying this coming from a classical background, also from very voice science background as well. Uh, some people that are working in contemporary music might call this falsetto. Um, and usually, I would apply that more to a, a timbre or a color rather than an actual vocal register. She switches, though, at one point into a much heavier, more condensed kind of sound. And the way that she does that is by essentially shifting which muscles in here are more active or less active so that one set of muscles takes over and takes the dominance of the entire sound production. Let's go back here. Oh, no, it was a little bit earlier. Right there. So that's what a lot of people refer to as a mixed sound. Uh, it's more TA dominant thyroretinoid. So it's that's the muscle that uh, goes around either side of the vocal folds. And it makes it a little bit thicker. And that makes sense, right? A, a thicker, uh, thicker, more full contact as the vocal folds are vibrating, that's gonna create a thicker, more condensed kind of sound. Now, well, I can say, oh, it's just this muscle you know, doing more than that muscle, that's not something you can just toggle on and off when you're singing. Uh, yeah, some people will naturally know how to shift that more or less. Uh, it's kind of like, well, you use your bicep to go this way and your tricep to go this way, right? Um, but that's inside, right? This is inside of your larynx and this is really hard to actually feel those muscles going. So singers often have to rely on resonance feedback to say, yes, this is actually, it shifted in this way, or they might feel like a tiny thing here or a little position. So it's amazing how we have all of these different strategies to try and get singers into a mixed sound or a more heavy kind of sound, still very light, but heavier connection. And it, I think when you're working with a vocal coach, you just have to really try a bunch of things until you find the right, the right one. Hopefully it's somebody that can get you to the right spot within like the first one or two, maybe three. That's right where that switch happens. One more time, listen to that. And I love we don't see any extra stress when she makes that switch. That's the way it should be. And now she's back to that really light, heavy voice. That like, she actually pulled more on one side of her lips there, the little Elvis going on and completely lost the phonation. She was so light on it, so breathy. And then eventually it was just air coming through. I think the ability to control essentially how much air is coming through to the point where it stops phonating is really impressive. She's able to really ride the line between air and phonation. I don't know how to feel, Beautiful. But I want to try. It reminds me of Dimash right there. I don't know how to feel. <laughs> right there. When she went down to someday, she re raised the lip and this part, that helped to keep the voice in line with that focused spot. That's a really, a really fun trick. Um, a lot of times singers are just thinking about all the inner stuff because there's so much going on. 
But if we use more expression in our face, it unlocks a whole new set of tools. There's that really soft T again. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, it almost is grimacing on that one. Her mouth is, gosh, I think her teeth might actually be shut on might. Might, might. Wow. That's gutsy. Someday I might. It's just lots of a, a little, like that lip and cheek movement. Mmm. Phineas doing a backup harmony there. And I want to get into that, but we need to go back first. Um, number one thing though, I'm a sucker for strings. I love, I love stripped down performances where you have just the piano and the voice. Oh, amazing. That's like my favorite kind of vocal performance to listen to. And then you add strings and it gives this extra swell of emotion. Strings in all kinds of scoring. In, in Hollywood film scores, you see strings enter with these big sweeping lines whenever we have soaring emotions. It tends to be very romantic in nature. Uh, so beautiful choice. This is so classy. Just it feels great within the whole atmosphere of the Grammys especially. She is leaning more and more now into that additional TA engagement in the sound to make it a little bit stronger, a little more condensed. One of the things that this actually can really help with, other than just building the sound, is it can help with breath control. When you have that super whispery kind of tone like this up here, it's actually letting more air escape. So it's just not gonna be usable for a really long note as well as the kind of sound that has a lot more closure. So if you think about the vocal folds going wacka, 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 whenever we create a pitch, whenever herds go wacka, 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 there's like a little section that is staying open when she's singing with a really whispery kind of tone. It's letting more air through. Um, and it can also have to do with like the thinness of the, the folds. These things combine and they create a much lighter tone. But then when we get to this TA engagement, it is pushing more of those chords together. And it's, I love thinking about it like, like a rubber band, one of those thicker rubber bands. When you pull them, the sides become thinner, right? And when the vocal folds are pulled like this, that's to make a higher pitch. And it goes up and it becomes lighter. It's easier for vocal folds to vibrate really quickly together. And then as they go like this with your rubber band, Right, the sides get thicker. So you can kind of think about that. This, this sort of motion is more the CTs, cricothyroids, and then the sides have more connection in here as well. They're both working together. So she is essentially using registration to hugely help in that overall feeling of growth in the song. <laughs> She really strikes me like an old-time jazz singer sometimes, like a little Ella. So now she's into that heavier, heavier function. And you can hear that there's not as much air escaping easily. Cause I, cause I, 
<laughs> that was a great example of being able to bring that head voice down lower and the, the mixed sound up higher. When you are a professional, like at her level, just honestly, wherever you're starting, you should always seek to have crossover in the pitches that you can sing in different registers. So you can choose which register to sing in to create a particular emotion. Back one more time. That was a great example of it. Don't tell my boyfriend it's not what he's made for. But what was I made for? Cause I, cause I, I don't. <laughs> Right there, she has that like little grin. It's a, she has an inner smile in her sound for sure. And as she slides over that, it once again reminds me of this old time jazz sound. I feel like she could have sung with a lot of big bands, <laughs> but somehow got transported to today and is creating these songs. This one just feels like an extremely gorgeous ballad. I don't know that I would necessarily put it in any particular genre. I think it fits more into pop, but uh, this kind of ballad that's stripped down like this could really be in any genre. Uh, some of the runs feel maybe a tiny bit more pop, but then you go, well, there's lots of country singers that do that, country blues ones. I think mean, Chris Stapleton just does runs out the kazoo. So uh, we could transport this to just about any genre and make a good case for it. Uh, however, if I go back to a lot of older singing, I'm like, oh yeah, no, I totally hear that old jazz spirit in this. <laughs> <laughs> I love that lip pull. Think I forgot. We have to go back just a little bit because we had a, a few backings in here. Uh, we can't really talk about Billie Eilish without uh, paying a lot of attention to her brother Phineas as well been producing with her since the very beginning, songwriting with her. I, I love that this is a brother-sister combo. This is just, that's so special. And across the ages, we see incredible music that comes from people in, in their family making music. I think it's so, so, um, it just makes my heart really happy anytime I see that. <laughs> Um, this might be because partly because I grew up in a family with tons of music. I still love making music with my mom. Often my mom will play the piano and I'll sing, but sometimes we play piano duets together and oh my gosh, it is hilarious. <laughs> We're just like, why did you play that note? And then, you know, hit wrong notes just for the fun of it, just to bother the other one. It's so great. I love it. And so, uh, when you see this kind of family bond in music making, you just, it's really hard to replicate a lifetime growing up together in forging a new relationship in a band. There's a different understanding there and there have been really hard times that that set of people has already conquered. Yes, I think that there's, you can achieve that possibly with bands that have been together for a very long time down the road, but at this age, that's really hard to find. I'm also thinking about uh, like the warning, those sisters, so incredible, right? When you see that, there's just an energy and an understanding built through childhood. It's super beautiful. I, I think that a large reason of the success of Billie Eilish is, is completely with her brother. He's doing beautiful harmonies there. 
so light and subtle. This is across Billie Eilish's entire work too. It's just tons of beautiful, subtle vocal layers. I love the production on her voice. Phineas is very much responsible, I think, for most of that. The layers that they bring in in all of her songs. Wow. Wow. I'm especially Bad Guy once again comes back to mind. Anyhow, whew, one more time. Cause I, I don't know how to feel, but I wanna try. I love the way the longing has more strength there. I don't know how to feel, but someday I might. Someday I might. That moment right there just makes my eyes like start to water right away. <sniffs> Gosh. Um, it's so soft and personal and vulnerable on words that I feel can instantly resonate with so many people. I think I forgot how to be happy. Like, whoa, that's so deep. And and I think most of us have been in a place in life at some point where we weren't sure we knew how to be happy anymore. I know I've been there several times. Uh, and I can promise you that with lots of therapy and lots of work on myself, I am in a much happier place now. It does, it is possible to really truly get away from those dark times. But I think it's so important for artists that are shaping music today to really pay attention to this. The rates of suicide in the country are, are high. We see this infiltrating teens and, and young people so much. And this, I think, resonates with so many people because it's people are just having a really, really rough time. So having a moment like this where they can connect with a singer and say, yeah, that's exactly how I feel. That's so beautiful. The lyrics are totally perfect. Gosh, she is. She went into her mixed so lightly to give it just a tiny bit of longing. She did a great job of not making it actually louder. Something I wait for, and something I made for. And I particularly love that in that last bit, it does not resolve, meaning our chord and uh, sung note, our melody, it doesn't go back to home. It actually leaves us with a, like a tiny, tiny question of like, what was I made for? <sighs> Brilliant. Something I made for. No resolution. <laughs> So good. This song doesn't feature a huge vocal range or a huge dynamic range, but it does feature a huge emotional impact. And I think that Billie Eilish's style, her vocal technique, and the way she communicates perfect lyrics are very much meriting of that Grammy Award. Now, if you're a total metalhead or rocker and you've never heard her stuff before, go check out bad guy. Again, lots of progressive elements. You'll see a little bit about what I'm talking about uh, in that sort of 
very much unnormal direction. And if you want to see a list of more artists that I think maybe rockers and metalheads should consider, check this playlist out over here. You fall more in love with music every day.